quick introduction because we have a uh, King Air down there that's getting ready to start up. I am here with a fitness coach. My fitness coach, Leslie Kucha, is going flying with me today and she's going to share some good information. Liking it? Yes! <laughs> I was like, who are you? Where are you looking at? <laughs> So Leslie, so can you tell us a little bit about yourself and um, like where you're from and what you're interested in and what you're doing and stuff like that? Yeah, so I was born and raised in Michigan, uh, moved here down to Texas in January, so hasn't even been a full year yet, but I am a family of five. I've got three other siblings. I am the second oldest, but I like to pretend I'm the oldest of all of them. <laughs> um, so yeah, I went to school for exercise science and throughout school I actually got all of my certifications as well as, well as my bachelor's degree in exercise science. So I've got my um, certified personal trainer cert, my USA weightlifting, I actually competed in Olympic weightlifting for a little bit there. And then, nice. Um, yes, yes. Very good. So I don't do that anymore, but that was a fun a couple of years. And then I also have my um, certified strength and conditioning specialist. So, and then I've been working with diet and nutrition for client, with clients for the last about four and a half years. Great. So, yeah. Okay. So some of the things we have in common. I'm going to be looking around for traffic also. Please don't think it's uh, nice. it's You're rude good. while I'm while I'm talking to you. Um, so and birds, <laughs> traffic and birds. <laughs> um, okay, so one of the things, some of the things we have in common is we're both from Michigan. Yes. The airplanes from Michigan. Yep. So we are three ladies Michigan flying crew. <laughs> yes, a Michigan crew. Yep, flying a Michigan airplane um, here in Texas. And uh, Leslie is my fitness coach, and we're working on the nutrition first right now, a little bit of the fitness. Uh, she's trying to get me to walk steps, uh, of course. We know that's a good thing. Um, and uh, I also went to school. You went to Western Michigan? Western Michigan, yep. Okay, so she graduated from Western Michigan University. I went there for three semesters before I transferred to a different school, but we have that in common also. And um, her boyfriend is a pilot uh, for Envoy. Yes, the Envoy. Re the regional carrier for American. And one of the things I liked about Leslie when I saw her information and I was looking for a fitness coach is that she has an awareness of what pilot lifestyle is and understands the difficulties that I have. Yeah. Uh, more so than somebody who doesn't have that in their life because it is different being a pilot. For sure, yep. Drew and I have been together for about four years. He's only been with um, the airline for a year. I think it was a year, like two days ago, actually. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, yay! Congratulations, Drew! <laughs> yes, and big so, milestone. But before that, you know, flying still, trying to get as many hours, so it's still, he still was gone all the time. Um, came home at night, but was gone for 12 hours of the day, so it's very similar to traveling still. Right. He's so. doing a lot of traveling. Yep, and it's definitely a different lifestyle. Yes, definitely different. And it, it's very hard, so um, I appreciate your guidance and trying to get through some of those hard spots and, and relearn a new way to eat so that I can be healthier for my job, which, uh, which I really feel like I need to be, of course. Yes. And just <laughs> life in general, and because I, in general. I have such a very active life, and I want to keep, keep living it. And, and doing fun things. You got a lot of world to see. You got to stay healthy to I do it. I do. We do have a lot of world to see. Speaking of, this is Lake Ray Roberts, and so I'm just kind of following an outline around it while I'm looking for some traffic and uh, and birds and stuff like that. But it's a big lake, as you can see. Um, one of the reservoirs that fills the uh, DFW Metroplex, I believe. Oh wow. Yes. And so a lot, lots of water and good place to to fly around while we have our little conversation. Okay, so I wrote down some stuff. Let me see here. Okay, so one of the things I wanted, I just, I absolutely loved, and I'm, I've never heard it anywhere else, was you asked me when I started this to be 
you picked a consistent, we're doing macros basically. Yeah. And also the a consistent calorie. I have never done that. So um, can you explain a little bit about the consistency and calories? Because honestly, I am 50 years old and I've been through a lot of different other diets that had a range. And I, as you know from tracking for a little while before you, you had me follow anything, I was up and down quite a bit, big range in my calories per day. Yeah, so if we take it back to square one, it's all about uh, your metabolism. So what your metabolism is, is the amount of calories that you need in one day to keep you alive and to maintain where you're at right now. That is essentially what your metabolism is. So that calorie range, if you take it up, you're in a surplus. Surplus, you would gain weight. If you take it down, you're in a deficit, you would lose weight. So right there is why it's important to know what that calorie range is to make sure that you're in a deficit if your goal is weight loss. So if you're eating high and low all the time and every day is different, one day you might be in a deficit, the next day you might be in a surplus. Um, and then some days you might be at maintenance. So it's important to kind of be aware of where you're eating and so that you can align it with your goal. Um, but it's not always the case that you have to have seven days a week has to be the exact same. You can get a little bit more advanced with it um, and going up and down and having maybe throughout the week five days you eat lower and then on the weekend you have two days where you eat higher uh, but it still equals the same weekly calorie target so if you're eating the same all seven days whatever that equals weekly you can do that and split it up throughout high and low days to equal that weekly calorie target as well but the thing I see that's difficult with that is a lot of times people eat so low throughout the week or maybe in a pilot's perspective when you're traveling you might be eating less right. and then when you're home you're eating so much more because you hadn't really eaten for a few days that then you double the amount of calories you had and then your weekly budget puts you in a calorie surplus where you gain weight. Okay. Does that kind of make sense? Yes. Yeah. For sure. So it's just a little bit more helpful to have that consistent target every day and can you in line with what your goal is. Very good. One of the things that we we, we started with was, uh, we're, as we're doing the macros, was the protein. And um, I was I was shocked at how much protein I was eating. I've never had that much protein before <laughs> consistently. Yep. I mean, and it's not keto um, because I'm certainly eating carbs and fat, uh, so it's not a solid like keto. So can you tell us about like the makeup of the different macros and yeah. why it's kind of important to, to have a range and to track those? Yeah, so you're, when you eat, talk about calories, your calories are made up of your macronutrients and your micronutrients. So micro would be like fiber and your vitamins and minerals and your macronutrients, or as we shorten it to macros, is your carbs, your fats, and your proteins. Okay. So your body needs all three. Uh, that's why I don't like keto or certain diets like that because their focus is to minimize one of the three macros, but there's a reason that we have three of them because your body uses all three. Okay. So they, you're, each one is responsible for different actions in your body. So protein specifically is in charge of building and maintaining lean body mass. And when I talk lean body mass, it's more than just muscle. Muscle is the biggest one that you absolutely need protein if you want to build muscle, but also to a cellular level. And your bones, your tendons, ligaments, your cells, all of those parts of your body, they need protein to stay strong and to not break down and deteriorate. So that's why it's super important to focus on a protein goal. But as you've probably noticed, protein is the most difficult to get in. Right. Carbs and fats are tasty and they're everywhere. Yes, that's but true. Protein <laughs> is a little bit more difficult to get in. It's not always the best tasting um, or you have to eat like a ton of meat. And if you don't like meat, then it might be a little difficult to get that in. Um, and then your fats, you need fat because fat is important for hormone modulation, um, transporting and converting certain hormones in your body, as well as recovering from stress or a workout. Uh, you use a lot of fat to do that. And then carbs, 
Uh, carbs are actually your body's preferred method of energy at a cellular level and even just right now to keep us awake we're burning carbs um, you think your brain uses a lot of carbs you use carbs for some protein um, conversions in your liver your muscles so your body needs all three so it's important to be able to look at all of those and look at your macros to make sure that you have enough of each one so your body can function properly versus you know only eating two and then you're lacking in the other one and some things might go gray. Okay. Today. Okay, great. Okay, so and along those lines, something very important, which um, which you have upped in my um, life also, is my um, uh, water intake. Yeah. <laughs> We're over a lot of water, but I'm not drinking that. Right. <laughs> but let's talk about water because, of course, we've all heard about water. Um, and I know I was probably could be consistently getting, I would call it four to five glasses a day, maybe around 50 ounces. Um, probably 60 ounces was a stretch yeah. um, and difficult. And water is one of my preferred drinks actually throughout the day. And I do have an awareness when I'm getting thirsty. So yep. I haven't, some people have lost that, I, I believe. Oh yeah. Um, and so I, I, I did drink water before I um, got with you to give me a good, a better fitness plan and a better course of action. But tell me about the water because that blew me away. So, yes. and I think that that would uh, also be uh, interesting to other people as well. Yeah. So, just like your body needs protein, fat, and carbs, your body needs water to operate at a cellular level. So, every part of your body uses water to either transport something, to convert something, or some sort of function in your body. I mean, your body's made up of at least 6% of water. You just, you need it at a cellular level to operate properly. So a lot of times when we don't drink enough water, we, uh, your body actually, I like to call them little alarm clocks. Like your body sends you signals like, hey, something's wrong. Um, things would be like if you're hitting a crash midday, how much water have you had to drink or can't go to the bathroom, how much water, um, getting headaches like migraines, that can be a, um, not enough water or even if you have to work out and you're really sore for a long period of time, that could also be from not enough water to recover, muscle tightness, things like that. Um, so when you don't have enough water, all those things can go wrong because your body needs it to operate. So it's kind of like, what is something the plane needs? The plane needs fuel. If you don't give it enough fuel and you just fill the plane to the lowest amount to get it off the ground, you're gonna have to keep crashing or landing to fill it back up again, right? That makes sense. Yeah. Thank you <laughs> for putting in pilot talk. Yeah. <laughs> so it's easier to just fill the tank all the way to the top and then you can go on your long flight. Whereas your body, if you fill your body with enough water throughout the day, you're not gonna get those side effects of not having enough water. So I always recommend about 80 on the short end, but usually 100 to 120 ounces of water a day. Okay, so am I, so I'm at 100. I started at 80, I got used to 80, and I actually found myself going up over 80. Um, and then you increased it to 100. <laughs> And um, I got used to 100, and I am going over 100 now. So is yes. 120 my next goal eventually? Yes, we'll 120. get there. We'll okay. get there. We're gonna, we're, I like she does things in nice, manageable steps. That is so important. Yes, you got to get used to it 1% of the time. Yes, I'm okay. at 100 ounces a day consistently. That is just if I drink 3 liters, I try to drink 3 liters. There's an airplane way over there on the other side of the lake. We'll keep an eye on that one because he's our same altitude. He or she. And, um, okay, so I'm at 100 and working my way. And, oh, my gosh, my body is getting used to drinking that much water. Yep. You will get used to it. At first, you're probably, like, going to the bathroom every other minute. <laughs> but do get used to it once your body figures out, oh, like, I need this and can shuffle it around to where it needs to be. Yes. Used, and then you won't be running to the bathroom so <laughs> I love how you describe things because you're talking about the water shuttling around to where it needs to go. I'm like, oh my gosh, that is so perfect because it helps me understand why it's really important to drink water besides just like quenching my thirst. Right, yeah. Usually when you're thirsty, 
who are already slightly dehydrated. Okay, that is good to know. So you should get to a point where you're never really thirsty. Yep. Okay, good. Yeah. Does it matter if you chug on water or sip on it during the day? Is there one preference over another? So your body will actually prefer if you chug eight to six ounces at a time. Oh, good. That's what I've been yeah. doing. Yeah. yeah. Okay, <laughs> awesome. First is just sitting there sipping it, doing um, smaller chugs like that. It would be very beneficial. Okay. Good. That's it's easier that way, too. <laughs> okay, uh, it is easier. I can I can drink a, a six to eight ounces at a time. It's a lot easier than I can do a hundred sips. Right. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to talk about now uh, suggestions for, for specifically, as I said, she uh, has experience with her boyfriend being a pilot, and that's very helpful for me being a pilot, but also for people who uh, are traveling a lot. And right now during COVID, we're not doing as much traveling, but people are starting to get out there and do it. So how can we uh, still maintain healthy habits while we're traveling? That's very difficult to do. So do you have some suggestions on healthy habits? Yeah. So, I mean, basically what we've talked about was making sure even though you are flying, um, might not be able to be going to the bathroom all of the time, but drinking enough water. Um, so some tricks for doing that is depending on what time you're kind of planning it out around what time your flights are. So maybe first thing when you wake up, you're chugging 20 ounces instead of eight ounces to get it in. And then um, planning it out throughout the rest of your day. So you're chugging in the morning, you're chugging during a uh, layover that you have. Then when you're when you get back home, you're chugging then. So you don't always have to be drinking water during when you're, while you're in the cockpit. Okay, um, but structuring it throughout your day. That's great. I've I've noticed that what I I, I call it prehydrate. Yeah, like I'll prehydrate for something coming up. Yeah. Uh, before I do something if I can. Yeah, yep, exactly, okay. that's awesome. Okay, cool. And, um, as far as food goes, I would highlight, I assume most pilots have a lunch box or a cooler that they take. Highly recommend if you don't. <laughs> okay. um, but making sure, or kind of planning out and packing as many meals as possible um, to take with you so you don't have to stop and eat. Because naturally, traveling, you're going to have to you can't pack your entire week of meals, um, but at least packing the first day or two, maybe even three days, depending on how good you are with fitting packages in your cooler okay. <laughs> and configuring them um, so that you can, you know, because when you make your own meals, you have way more control over what's in them. When you go out to eat, they're going to typically be lower in protein, higher in fat, higher in carbs um, because of the way they cook them in oil and sugars and things like that. Um, and then just packing as many snacks as possible. So, and just some mindset things. Always remember that someone else's goals aren't yours. So, if you have your own goal to be on this journey to lose weight and not be the statistics to gain weight because you're traveling so much, then just remember it might require a little bit of work, but you can, it's still possible. You can still do it. It is very possible to travel and lose weight. Yes. Yes. Yep, it is. Okay, and then any others? As far as activity, it doesn't always mean that you have to go to the gym and your hotel and hit the weight room. Um, that's where steps can come in handy. So even when you're flying all the time, you're obviously sitting a lot. Um, but you are getting a lot of steps walking through the airport, walking to your car, things like that. So even going on a walk before you leave in the morning or a walk at night or just walking around your hotel just to get a little bit more movement, that's going to help you not be so sedentary. Um, it doesn't always have to be going to the gym. You can just walk for 10 minutes. That's going to help you just as much. Nice. And so one of the nice things with the technology, especially with COVID now, people are getting more comfortable with doing things more online. And so the technology has given us such great tools that you actually do your coaching through the internet. Yes. Yep, so my coaching is 100% online. I mean, obviously it's nice that we can get together. We live in the same town. Yes. But most of my client base is actually in Michigan while I'm here in Texas. Oh. So I have a few Texas and I even have a couple in California. Nice. So I have clients all over. It's completely online, but I can still see you are required to record everything that you're doing, whether it's your workouts, 
did you get your water in, did you get your steps in, and I can see all of your food logs, so it is, I'm able to keep you accountable and see exactly what you're doing if you're following through while I'm states away from you, so we don't have to be neighbors to work together. <laughs> I love that. So that, and that's very helpful for me because I'm on the go, I'm very active, I do have my devices with me, I'm hooked up to my watch for steps, yep. and so I, I just love that. I think that's the use of technology is great. We're using it here to, to help us out with looking for airplanes. I'm also looking out while I'm flying, just like I'm supposed to do, and it, it's all very helpful. So if somebody wants to try to find you on the internet, uh, how would they do that? So I have my Facebook and my Instagram, they're both at Leslie Kucha, it's L-E-S-L-I-E, last name is K-U-T-H-A. Um, you can message me on there, there, are a, there is an email button on my profile, you can email me, it's also just my first and last name, Lekucha, gmail.com. Okay, very good. So anything else you want to share? Yeah, so one thing I thought of just to add with it being completely online is um, something that a hurdle that some people have when they travel is with in-person training or an in-person coach, you can only do it once or twice a week. You, or if you're going into the gym with a trainer, you might not be able to see them this week because you're traveling or you can only see them once this week, but being completely online, we can work together every day even when you are traveling. So you don't have to fall off your goals and start over every week. You can keep on going forward. And I love how you are available to me. If I have any questions at all, I can send you a message and you're there with a prompt reply. Uh, maybe I'm trying to check on something that I'm about to eat or, or something like that. Yes. So that's, that's been very, very helpful. I love sending my voice memos <laughs> to you guys. <laughs> that's awesome. Yes, and I love getting them because it's, it's definitely very helpful. Yes. Why don't you take the selfie and you can just send it to me. Okay. <laughs> That's easier. That's fun. All right. Hey, thank you for... You're welcome. Inviting me to do this. It's fun, isn't it? It is. I like, when I did that video with her and I was putting it together, I was really trying to just do something as a friendship thing. And then yeah. I was thinking, oh, that's like a, we're having a conversation. I like doing that. <laughs> okay, I'm going to switch to up. tower here. 10 tower, Cherokee 6605, Juliet 10 to the northeast, imbalance the numbers. Cherokee 6605, Juliet 10 tower, if you would, that report a TWU. Report TWU 05, Juliet. All right, so to force your Foxtrot, follow the Seneca number two, runway three six right, go to land. Six three three two, no laid, Alpha four. Alpha four, six one three two. Cherokee zero five, Juliet, still clear to land, runway three six right. Clear to land, three six right, zero five to land. Set down, Cherokee 7678 Whiskey is approximately right. 10 miles to your west. Area command and do the RNAV 36 South Vector. I can do that text away, that's alright. We'll make the next one. Cherokee 7678 Whiskey. Cherokee 05 Juliet, nicely done, right on out 5, kind of ground, we'll see you. Up 5 and ground, 05 Juliet, great day. We did an hour. Did that feel like an hour? No. <laughs> It's not like 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, shut down checklist. Throttle, Ground, idle, uh, electrical equipment off. That's all of those that are already off. Beacon on. Beacon on. Avionics master off. Goodbye. Thank you for joining me. Yeah. Uh, great.